Hi folks, it's Matt Allington here. As often is the case, I get a lot of inspiration for the things that I share on my YouTube channel and on my blog from dealing with my clients in the real world. And I wanted to share something with you today. The topic's going to be compare two of anything in your Power BI reports. And so to demonstrate the technique today, I'm going to compare two years in the AdventureWorks database. I'm just going to pick any two years and do a direct comparison between those two years. But this technique can be used to compare products. It can be used to compare snapshots. Maybe you've got financial data and you're loading different versions of your forecast for the entire year. You can pick any two snapshots and compare the data. So it's a generic technique and you'll get a sense of what I'm talking about as we get into the detail. So let me start off by jumping over to the data model. This is the standard AdventureWorks data model that I use. In this case, I'm going to jump over to my first page. And I have product category in the rows of a matrix, and I've got my total sales. Now, given that this example is going to be about years, what would happen if I came up to the calendar and I brought calendar year into my matrix? Now, of course, I can see every year on my calendar. So this is one way of doing the solution. And there's nothing wrong with this. I could come up here and say, well, actually, I only want to see, um, let's say, 2017 and 2019. And so from this sense, I am looking at two years of my interest. But notice that there's no comparison calculations here. It doesn't show me the change between 2017 and 2019. It doesn't show me the percentage change. And so there's a lot of other things that you might want to see with the data. And this is not really the best way to do it. So there, as I said on the earlier slide, there are different ways of doing it. The way I'm going to do this is I'm going to duplicate the calendar table. So I'm going to jump over to this view here and I'll create a new table. You could do this inside Power Query, but in this case, I think it's pretty simple just to use DAX. And so this is going to be my comparison calendar. And I'm just going to simply say, give me the calendar. And so what this will do, I'll write a DAX table function that returns an exact copy of the calendar table. And if I jump over to my model view now, here is my new calendar. And at this point in time, it's not joined to anything, and, and that's deliberate. But what I will do is I'll join the sales order date to the comparison calendar date so that I've now got two relationships, one to each of those particular calendars. Now this causes a problem and let me show you the problem. So what I would probably do now is I would remove calendar year from my visual and I might create a slicer and I'll bring calendar year into my slicer. I don't particularly like this type of slicer, so I'll change it. And so let's say I put a filter on this slicer for 2018. Now my visual is showing sales for 2018. And I want to do the same thing for my comparison calendar. So I'll duplicate that, just Control C, Control V. Notice that this is currently an identical copy. They're both filtering the main calendar. So I'll just remove the, the main calendar and bring in the comparison calendar year. And when I click on, say, a comparison year, so let's what I did before, 2017 compared with 2019, notice that it returns nothing. And of course, this is going to happen because this slicer is filtering all the data in the sales table and only leaving the year 2017. And this slicer off a different table is doing the same thing, but on 2019. And the result of those two filters is that there'll be no data left. So clearly this is not the end state. So what I'm going to do, there are a few different ways of doing this, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to come here and I'm going to make this an inactive relationship. So I'm going to keep the relationship between the comparison calendar and my sales, but I'm going to make it inactive. And of course, when I do that, this slicer has no impact at all on my visual because it's now got an inactive relationship. But now that I've got this framework in place, what I can do is I can write a new formula and this one's going to be sales. So I'll do a new measure and I'll call this comparison sales. And the formula needs to manipulate filtering behavior. And in this case, the filtering behavior is to change the way the relationships are working in the visual. So I'm going to need calculate and ultimately, I want to calculate total sales. But before I do that, I need to remove any filter that's coming from the calendar table. So I need to remove the filter from this slicer here. Otherwise, I won't be able to access a different year. And after I've removed that, I'm then going to turn on the relationship between the comparison calendar. And so I can do that using the use relationship function. 
and I have to define the relationship. It's the one between the comparison calendar date and the sales order date. So I just turn on that relationship. And so in this sense, calculate is manipulating the filtering behavior of my model. It's saying ignore the filter coming from the entire calendar table and instead respect the filter coming from the comparison calendar table. So I'll click OK. I will just do a little bit of quick formatting just to make sure that the numbers are a lot easier to compare. Do it the same as the total sales. If I now bring that into my visual here, and if I pick those two years that I talked about before, you can see now I've got hard coded the sales in 2017 and 2019. Of course, I can pick any two years. And in fact, because I'm using a relationship to the entire calendar table, I could also swap this out and perhaps go into months. So let me bring in a month name into that slicer and I'll bring comparison calendar, bring the month name into that slicer. And then I can pick any period. I might just pick April compared with uh, August in 2018. You can see that my month name here is not sorted. So I might just quickly fix that. Sort by column, sort by month number of year. And of course, I need to do the same for my comparison table. Sort by month number of year. And so now I've selected April 2019 to be compared with August 2018. Now, of course, another problem we've got now is that there's no clear indication within these measure names what it is that we're looking at. And in fact, I can't dynamically change the names of these measures, so that's not really an option. But what I could do as an alternative is I could write a nice title for my visual that clearly articulates what's going on here. Now, in order to do this, um, I'm just going to write a simple scenario. So I'm just going to remove the month names and I'm just going to work on the years. Um, it would certainly be possible to write something more complex that detects what level of granularity is selected in these slices and then write a title for the chart. But just to keep it simple, let me go ahead and write a title. So uh, it's arguable where I should put this. I might put it in the sales table and I'll just call this my title. And I'm going to use the selected value. The selected value function will have a peek at the column I specify. In this case, it's the calendar year. And it will tell me what value is selected. And so what I might do is I'll say, you have selected, I'll come back and change this in a minute. And just to demonstrate the point, you have selected and then calendar year. Once I've done that, I'll click on the visual, find my title, come up to format, turn on the title. Anywhere you see this FX, that's conditional formatting. So I click FX and the field I want to use is called title. And if I select that field, you can see that I've currently it says nothing and that's because I haven't selected anything in my calendar slicer. But when I pick on one of those years, my title updates to show me exactly what I've selected. In the case that I haven't selected anything, it returns blank and that's why you can't see anything here. So let's go back and do some modifications to this title. So what I might do is I'll say that the, um, I'll do some variables. This year is equal to selected value calendar year. And I'll just duplicate this whole row of code because that's pretty useful. And what I'll do is um, comparison year. That'll be selected value of the comparison calendar calendar year. IntelliSense is a little bit rough there. So that's the two selected years. And now I can say result equals. And now I can basically build the text tree. Um, so this will say showing sales for and then I need to sort of do a concatenation. Another concatenation need a space compared with the year and another concatenation and this will be the comparison year. And then I can just go return result. So let's have a look at that. Currently, I have nothing selected, so I could certainly 
improve this overall title saying please select some values from the slicer so I could just sense whether there is a single value here. In fact, um, yeah, I'd have to change that formula, but I'll just go and select 2018 and 2019. And now I've got a really nice um, descriptive header saying that I'm showing sales for 2018, comparing it with the year 2019. And then of course, I can go ahead and write another measure because these two measures operate independently. I can write a measure like this, change versus comparison, something like that. And this would just simply be now it's arguable, but which should be positive or negative. Um, so comparison year is greater. I think I'd probably want it to be negative. So I'll say total sales subtract comparison sales. I will just do the formatting for completeness. It'll only take a second to do that. So I'll just come up to currency general, change that to zero. I'll add that one in. And because this new measure is also dependent on the comparison sales and the total sales measure, of course, it's going to update. If I pick the same year, there's no change. If I pick different years, you can see those change. And then, of course, I can go ahead and do a percentage change and so on and so forth. So that's it. Hopefully you like my tip. We've got a stack of training available at skillwave.training. So why not head over and have a look at the courses that we have available if you'd like to learn more and learn faster about Power BI.